Welcome everybody to part two of the study of the 17 year timeline that's taken us into the seven year tribulation. If you haven't watched part one yet, you need to go do that right now. The link is in the description box below or just click the card above. It's not a very long video, but it has a lot of very important information that sets everything up for part two, which is what you're watching right now. Some of you are getting this video in the feeds along with my other main channel. Both of these videos were uploaded about the same time. So I highly recommend going back to our main channel to watch part one and then come back here to our backup channel to watch part two. It will make a whole lot more sense to you. But if you already watched part one, awesome, you're good to go. Now, remember what I said, the first thing you need to do, hit that subscribe button so that way we stay connected to you in case our main channel you came from takes a digital dirt nap and you will no longer have easy access to these reports and family before we get started please hit that like button to help push this video out to more users and please share with your networks now in the last video we were breaking down all the components of the 17 year timeline that started in 2014 and is going to run until 2031 the first part of this timeline was a three-year period from 2014 to 2017 ending at the Revelation 12 sign September 23rd 2017 and from the Revelation 12 sign all the way until today we are approaching the end of a seven-year warning period that ends on October 2nd 2024 at the Feast of Trumpets now in our last video we left off talking about the blood moon tetrad that takes place in the confines of 2020 to 2021 with the p number of blood moon tetrad and the bethlehem star that fell in the midst of it on december 21st all in the year 2020 and we know what happened in the year 2020 but after that things really start to heat up you're gonna be so happy that you came to watch the rest of this so let's get into it. In 2023, there were two celestial bodies that passed through the Revelation 12 constellation on the Feast of Trumpets around September 18th. One was a comet called Nishimura, and the name means Exalted Prince, the Exalted Manchild. And at the same time, there was an asteroid that passed through the Revelation 12 sign, and that was called child the child asteroid so what was god trying to tell us here that's easy he was reminding us what the seven-year warning was all about look at the name of these two celestial bodies nishimura which means exalted prince the exalted man child and by the way nishimura was all over the news last year remember that and then we have the child asteroid which that name speaks for itself and they pass through the womb of the Revelation 12 sign. And a quick note, if you didn't know, the Revelation 12 sign takes place every year at the Feast of Trumpets. Virgo, the virgin star constellation, is clothed in the sun and the moon is at her feet. That happens every year at Rosh Hashanah, Tishri 1, the Feast of Trumpets. Except in 2017, there was a special arrangement that gave her a crown of 12 stars with the addition of two extra planets within the midst of the Leo constellation. So like I was saying, these two celestial bodies passed through the womb of the Virgo constellation at the Feast of Trumpets in 2023, thus symbolizing the birth of the man-child because both of these celestial bodies exited the womb of Virgo which is the exact same thing that happened on day one of this warning sign back on September 23rd, 2017, where we saw the planet Jupiter exit the Revelation 12 sign between her legs, also at the Feast of Trumpets. Now we have seen two celestial sequences of a woman giving birth that happened twice within this seven year warning period. And since it happened twice, that's a confirmation that the physical manifestation of this warning will take place in the next and final seven year sector. The Bible says it takes two to make an agreement. When two or more agree, I'm in the midst of them. One could put a thousand to flight, two could put 10,000 to flight. And a picture of the birth of the man child happened twice within this same seven year warning period. So what does that signify? 
that the rapture resurrection is about to take place here at the beginning of the next and final seven year sector. And the last thing I want to point out is God placed this sign right at the beginning of the seventh year, which is the final year of the seven year warning period. God was declaring from the heavens saying, hey, you have one year left before the birth of the man child and the beginning of Daniel's 70th week. And God is just following his own protocol. He is giving us a one year warning that a birth is about to take place. Because in the Bible, God gave Abraham a one year warning that his son Isaac was going to be born. Genesis 18:10. And the Lord said, I will surely return to you about this time next year. You hear that? One year from now and your wife Sarah will have a son. God's one year warning before a significant birth takes place. There you go. And God gave us our one year warning of the birth of the man child that takes place at the rapture resurrection event almost one year ago on the Feast of Trumpets with the passing of the child asteroid through the womb of Virgo and also the Nishimura comet passing through as well which stands for Exalted Prince, the Exalted Man-Child. And that was almost one year ago, and this seven-year warning comes to an end, October 2nd at the Feast of Trumpets. Yeah, that's a super high watch time, family. And let me put something into perspective for you. If this is the case, if God is going to bring forth the physical birth of the man-child at the beginning of the next seven-year period, then that would mean that we would have had to have been in some pretty heavy birth pains within the last 12 months. Um, October 7th, when Israel was invaded, where the Israeli leadership declared this event marked the beginning of the final birth pains, leading them into the time of Jacob's trouble. So yes, I would say that confirms it. We are in the final birth pains. This runaway train is moving now and nobody can put an end to it except for the Antichrist who shows up after the rapture resurrection. Now before we move on to the final sign of the seven year warning which is going to be essentially the finale of this whole thing, Nishimura was in the constellation of the dog known as Canis Major since its inception. But then something began to happen. About 30 days out from Feast of Trumpets, Nishimura began exiting the constellation of the dog for the first time and headed towards the Revelation 12 sign. And it passed right through the womb of the Virgo constellation right at the Feast of Trumpets. And then Nishimura retreated into the constellation of the boat. And we checked on the Stellarium Nishimura never leaves the constellation of the boat ever again. We checked even beyond the thousand year millennial reign. It just stays there in a retrograde motion. So what does this all mean? I believe this is the redemption of the Gentiles because Nishimura came from the constellation of the dog, Canis Major, and Gentiles were referred to as dogs in the Bible. We see that in Matthew 15 verse 26. And then Nishimura, also known as the Exalted Prince Manchild, finally leaves as habitation of the dog constellation where it's been ever since its inception. It's the perfect picture of Gentiles. In Ephesians 2 verse 12 talks about that Gentiles were aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of promise having no hope and without God in the world. Dogs. Gentiles. This is why Nishimura has always been in the dog constellation. But then something changed. Nishimura, the exalted prince, man-child, left the dog constellation for the first time and quickly passed through the Leo constellation representing the crown and then passed right through the Revelation 12 constellation. Right on the day of the Feast of Trumpets, 2023, which is a picture of the body of Christ and man-child being birthed through Israel which the body of Christ consists mostly of Gentiles, the redemption for Gentiles, thus signifying the completed gift of salvation for Gentiles through the completed creation of the man-child, the body of Christ at the rapture resurrection. And then after that, Nishimura went right into the constellation of the boat. And the boat, of course, represents Jesus Christ, the ark, 
like Noah's Ark, we are safe inside the Ark of Jesus Christ forever. And this is why Nishimura never leaves the boat constellation ever again. And what about the child asteroid? Is there anything else outside of just the name of the asteroid that's significant? Well, if you remember, it wasn't just a child asteroid that passed through the womb of Virgo at this time. There was actually an entire host of asteroids also passed through the Revelation 12 sign during the Feast of Trumpets that had biblical words, biblical names, and words that had biblical meanings attached to them. And they all pointed towards the biblical narrative of Daniel's 70th week. God didn't just throw one rock at this whole celestial sign to get our attention. He emptied out his whole bag. Now the next sign I want to talk about is the one we just went through. We're all familiar with it. It is known as the sign of Jonah. And this is marked with the solar eclipse that took place on April 8th that slashed right through America. And the path of this eclipse passed through so many different towns and cities with prophetic names like Nineveh, Jonah, Gord, Rapture Harmony. A matter of fact, a whole multitude of Ninevehs had passed through and much, much more, all pointing towards the story of Jonah and coming judgment. And if you look at the map of America, it kind of resembles a whale. And what's really interesting, during this entire seven year period, there have been a series of solar eclipses that passed over America, forming the Hebrew letters Aleph, and the Tav, the Aleph is the A, which represents Alpha, and the Tav, which is an X, which represents the Omega. The Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. God essentially put his signature right on the top of America. God was essentially telling America, hey, I gave you your beginning, and now your end is near. And the world needs to take notice, because when this happened, World War III will go into hyperdrive. America is not going to become great again. That's why these signs are here. It's just tribulation ahead. And I believe God put this symbol on America to mark when America goes down, that is essentially the beginning of the tribulation. Now, some people are going to say, hey, Bob, you know what? All these celestial signs, they're not for us. I get it. These are all for the Jews. But the Jews aren't watching them right now. We are. And what we are doing is we are watching these signs because we know God is about to start dealing with the Jews during Daniel's 70th week. And if Daniel's 70th week is about to begin, then by default, we are taken out of here at the rapture resurrection. That is why we watch these signs. And this is why God put the A right over the top of America. Because a lot of people don't know this, but half the Jews on the planet are in America and the other half are all in Israel, with a few stragglers spread about the world. So was that sign about the fall of America? Sure it was, but it was also a signal to the Jews that, hey, the time of Jacob's trouble is about to begin. Now, family, we've seen a celestial sign that kicked off this whole seven-year warning period with Revelation 12 sign, the P number of Blood Moon Tetrad in 2020, along with the Bethlehem Star in the midst of it, the Nishimura Comet and the Child Asteroid at the Feast of Trumpets 2023, marking the one-year warning of the end of the seven-year warning, including the sign of Jonah. And yes, there were a bunch of solar eclipses and lunar eclipses, but I did not want to include them in the chart here because it'll get too confusing. I'm just focusing on the main signs here, okay? So the question is now, what is the big celestial sign that marks the end of this whole seven year period? And according to what we've seen already, whatever it is, it has to be really profound. And here it is, folks. Now, we were not even aware of this sign until only up to a few weeks ago, and that is the Star of Jacob. Now, what's so significant about this sign? Well, there are multiple reasons why this sign is where it's at. First reason, it falls on September 27, 927, and right away we think of the Daniel 927 seven-year agreement that transcends over the time of Jacob's trouble, the seven year tribulation. So we have the star of Jacob falling on the day that represents the seven year agreement that transcends over Daniel's 70th week. Daniel 927, September 27, 927. I know, you can't make this stuff up. But here's the thing, this sign actually has a dual meaning. Actually, I would say a triple meaning. You see, the star of Jacob 
was a red giant that went supernova almost 2,000 years ago. That's right. This star went nova right about the time of the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ when the Messiah was cut off from Israel at the end of the 69th week. But because of the distance of the star, it took almost 2,000 years for the light of this supernova to reach us here on the earth where it will actually be visible for us to see just like Jesus being the light of the world who walked the earth almost 2,000 years ago ascended into heaven and is going to return and he will be visible for us to see when we meet him in the air at the rapture resurrection both lights took place at the same time and none of us living today were able to see them and now both lights will reach the earth around the same time when we will see both of them and we see a picture of this in numbers 24 17 that talks about the characteristics of the star of jacob it says i shall see him but not now i shall behold him but not nigh doesn't that sound like what we're looking at right here with the star of jacob the light of that supernova took place almost 2000 years ago None of us were there to see it. We just have to have faith that that happened. Just like Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection. We didn't see it 2,000 years ago. We weren't there. We just have faith that it happened. But the proof of this supernova is about to manifest here on the earth when the light of that event reaches us on September 27th of this month. This verse goes on to say, There shall come a star out of Jacob, and a scepter shall rise out of Israel, and shall smite the corners of Moab and destroy all the children of Sheth. This is the fulfillment of what happens at Jesus' second coming to the earth to set up his millennial reign. The star of Jacob wasn't visible 2,000 years ago, but it will be visible here soon. And Jesus, who ascended to heaven 2,000 years ago, will also manifest in the air when he returns for the church at the rapture resurrection. Essentially, both lights manifested back then, and not too long from now, both lights will manifest in the heavens for us to see at the rapture resurrection. Now, the star of Jacob has one more additional meaning, and it has everything to do with the third and final sector of the 17-year time frame, the next seven years, which will be the seven-year tribulation, Daniel's 70th week. And there are other celestial signs in this next sector that confirms that the next sector will be the seven-year tribulation which means the rapture resurrection is at hand. Now folks, we are now entering sector three, the third and final sector of the 17 year timeline, the seven year tribulation. Now, the next celestial sign we're gonna look at are three blood moons that fall on Purim three years in a row. The first one actually already happened this year on March 24th. Then the next one will fall on March 13th, 2025, and the third and final one will fall on March 3rd in 2026. And why is this significant? Well, first of all, Purim, we all know, deals with the story of Esther. Esther, who's a Jewish woman who got married to the king of Persia, she kept her faith a secret from him, but then eventually she revealed it in order to save all the Jewish people from total annihilation. And the fact that this sign is taking place during a time where the Jews will face total annihilation from the earth during the time of Jacob's trouble is no coincidence. This is a huge warning for Israel. And what's interesting is this sign is completed right before the midpoint of the tribulation. And what happens at the midpoint of the tribulation? The two witnesses are killed. And what does the Bible say that happens right after they are killed? Revelation 11 verse 10. And they that dwell upon the earth shall rejoice over them and make merry and shall send gifts one to another because these two prophets tormented them that dwelt on the earth. And what do the Jews do to celebrate Purim? They wear extravagant costumes and they exchange gift baskets. Hmm. Yeah, I know. You can't make this stuff up. So this can represent the time the two witnesses are killed, perhaps maybe around Purim, which would be about mid-trib. So it's interesting that these Purim blood moons are here. And like in the story of Esther, they were facing total annihilation. 
and going forward from mid-trib, the Jews will face total annihilation again. He will have his armies surround Jerusalem so no Jews can get out, and then he will try to force them to take the mark of the beast. This is why Jesus warned them in Matthew 24, if you're on the housetop, don't go back down to get anything out of your house. Get out. If you're in the fields, don't go back into Jerusalem. That's the last place you want to be during this time. So ultimately, these blood moons are a warning of what's coming mid-trib. And just think about it when they're building that temple and they see those blood moons in progress, they're going to run to the rabbis and say, hey, rabbi, those blood moons are a warning for us. I thought we're in this time of peace and everything was great. So what are those blood moons warning us of? And the rabbi be like, don't worry about it. Yep, it's coming, folks. Those blood moons are right where they belong. And another thing I want to point out is the Bethlehem star that took place back in the middle of the previous seven-year period on December 21st, 2020. The pattern we're seeing is whatever celestial sign manifested in the seven-year warning was actually marking what was going to happen in the next seven-year period and when it was going to take place. So here we have the Bethlehem star in the middle of the seven-year warning period. And why did God place that there? Well, we know in the next seven-year period, right in the middle, what takes place. The death and resurrection of the two witnesses. The Bethlehem star stands for a new beginning. And the two witnesses will have a new beginning when they are resurrected and caught up into heaven at the midpoint of the tribulation, Revelation chapter 11. And this Bethlehem star also marks the new beginning of the Antichrist when he goes from being the man of sin to the son of perdition. And Satan always tries to mimic God. He always tries to mimic Jesus by calling himself the morning star. So it's no surprise that during the seven year warning period, we see the Bethlehem star marking the midpoint of the seven year warning because it's showing us what's going to happen at the midpoint of the following seven year period. All right, family, we are now heading towards the end of this timeline and we are now going to look at the final sign that will take place before Jesus returns for his second coming at the end of this entire timeline. And that is a super celestial sequence that takes place at the Feast of Trumpets in 2030. And this celestial sequence has the return of Jesus Christ and the establishment of the beginning of his millennial reign written all over it. And what's interesting is it shows up right at the six year mark, the one year warning before the return of Jesus Christ. And folks, this is right where it belongs because what happened at the completion of year six of the seven year warning in the previous seven years? God gave us a massive sign with the Nishimura Comet and the child asteroid passing through the Revelation 12 sign along with a whole host of other celestial bodies passing through the Revelation 12 sign. And here we are again at the end of the tribulation with a focus on the Revelation 12 sign which is a woman giving birth. So the question is, why does God want us to focus so much on the Revelation 12 sign one year before the end of each of these seven year periods? It's because, like I said before, it's a picture of a woman giving birth. Just like we saw at the end of the seven year warning, we're seeing the same thing here take place at the end of the seven year tribulation. A sign in the heavens that marks a one year warning declaring the second return of Jesus Christ to the earth to set up his millennial reign. And now we see here at the end of the seven year tribulation in 2030, another super sign dealing with the Revelation 12 sign signifying that one year from this point, something major is going to take place, which we know as the return of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and also a mass resurrection event of everybody that needs to be resurrected at this point another corporate physical birth. So let's do a quick breakdown of the sign. I'll give you a much clearer picture of it right here. So what you're looking at right here is a celestial alignment that takes place at the Feast of Trumpets in 2030. And everything in this celestial sequence is announcing the second coming of Jesus Christ to set up his millennial reign on the earth. If you go to the top of the screen, you see that Mars, which represents Satan, the God of War, Allah in Islam, is right by the mouth of Leo, the lion. G 
Jesus being the line of the tribe of Judah, Jesus will simply open his mouth and destroy all of Satan's armies. In Revelation 19.15 it says, And out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword, that with it he would smite the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron. So this is why Mars is in position right before the mouth of the lion. Just like the armies of the world will be in position right before the mouth of Jesus at his second coming. And then when you go down a little bit, you have Mercury, Venus, and the Sun right at the head of Virgo. Of course, Virgo represents corporate Israel on the earth at Jesus' second coming. And Mercury representing Michael and all of his angels, the armies of heaven. Venus representing the saints. And the Sun representing Jesus, the light of the world all coming to the earth where the bible says that he will return to the earth with all the armies of heaven and what's interesting in this artwork virgo is looking up not forward not down not to the side she's looking up makes you wonder why god calls the artist to do this you know why because israel is going to be looking up when jesus returns to the earth with all the armies of heaven and the last piece of the celestial sequence is right at the very bottom where we see Jupiter go into the constellation of the scales known as Libra. And what does this mean? Jupiter representing Jesus is called the king planet. Jesus who is the king of kings, lord of lords. And the fact that the king planet that represents Jesus is in the scales, this represents the sheep and goat judgment at the end of the tribulation when jesus separates the sheep from the goats he puts the sheep on his right and the goats on his left just like here in the scales you have a right plate and a left plate so like i said this entire celestial sequence takes place at the feast of trumpets in 2030 one year before the projected time of jesus return to the earth and notice how i use the word projected because we don't know exactly when the rapture resurrection event and the kickoff of Daniel's 70th week and when it ends actually takes place. We know when all the signs in the heavens pointing at these events take place, but we don't know when God will actually execute the physical manifestation that all these signs are pointing at. Because there is always that one variable in the Bible where Jesus says in Matthew 24:22 lest these days be shortened no flesh would be saved what are these days the days of daniel's 70th week so basically god can shave a little bit of time off the beginning which means we'll be here a little longer or he can shave all the time off at the end which means we leave right at the feast of trumpets and jesus comes back a lot earlier at the end or he shaves a little bit off both ends we don't know how this is going to play out all we know is that these celestial signs are pointing at the fact that this seven-year warning is coming to an end and the next seven years contains Daniel's 70th week. So family, I hope this study blessed you. And if it did, please share this with your networks. You're going to be encouraging the body of Christ with this information and encouraging the body of Christ about the blessed hope is one of the things that we will be rewarded for at the judgment seat of Christ. Yes you will be rewarded just by clicking share. And family, if you haven't subscribed yet, make sure to hit that subscribe button right now so that way you will continue receiving these reports uninterrupted in the event our other main channel is taken down. So may God bless you all and hang in there for we are almost finished. Amen. Amen.